Robin reporter last week at Chelsea and I didn't turn up. But I've got to admit, the reason I wasn't there for you last week, lads, was not because Spenny said he couldn't be arsed with listening to any of my pissed up drivel. It was never do with that. It was actually because I was on a bus stuck in traffic and I had no, I had no, um, no connection. And um, admittedly, if I had have had connection, I had no connection. I've, I've heard. <laughs> I've heard a different story. I had a different story in the media this week. Apparently, you was nursing Callum Wilson's left tit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was his missus. No. Yeah. I've got to. I've got no. to apologise. I've got to apologise to everybody who watches on YouTube. We've had it. We've had a couple of technical issues, and there's there's an internet issue at my end. But Ian, yes. What do you What do you make of that game at the weekend? I mean, I don't think any of us genuinely expected to beat Man City. In the, in the hope of hope, we thought we could do it, but we didn't. We're out the FA Cup. I I put a tweet out this week saying that this weekend saying I felt. That's it. It's all over. Where, where, where do you stand with that? I don't see it as all over. Let's go. Let's, I'm going to focus quickly on the game, first of all. First of all, I actually didn't think we were as bad as people are saying we were. No. I didn't think we were a shit. No. We, we, we made what we do in every single game is we're making individual mistakes. It's a lack of confidence. It's um, players making individual mistakes. And I personally... And I don't care who shoots me down. I don't care. I don't give a shit. There's nothing Eddie Howe can do if if a world class centre back cannot clear a ball further than fucking three yards in front of himself. You know, like when you look at the Rolls Royce that we had. Now, admittedly, that might be caused because he's been overplayed when he's injured, etc., etc., etc. But I thought we were actually okay. I like we we, we were never going to win the game. They are a much better football team than us. And we didn't have the... The only way we're going to win them is by outpressing them, bending them over and doing them up on the backside. And we, we didn't have the... We didn't have the, the facility... We didn't have the players to do that. So he set it up like I would have never set it up. But he set it up like that. The only thing that he did wrong for me was he played two players. And it's the same two players that every other person on here is going to say so I'm not even going to bother saying it well if Dan Burns a fucking wing back then then I'm fucking Captain America you know what I mean like Jesus Christ almighty you know like Dan Burns could, could have played on the on the left side of the three and done a really good job there actually you know and he could have left Botman out because Botman is fucking struggling. Um, and he, you know, but he didn't. For me, when he, you know, when he brought the substitutes on in the second half, when I seen, like, Hallkirk came on. Uh, and Miggy. Miggy as well, yeah, but Hall, that first touch, or the first touch I seen, because I was, by that point, I was, I was full of, I was out seeing my brother and I had a few. And uh, I'd had enough, but it the first touch I seen him take, I was like, This kid is world, he was like, He looked brilliant, and it changed the game. That section of the game where those substitutes came on was a different game for me, yeah. Um, and I hope, I hope he learns it. But I also, I'm gonna say before I leave everyone else to say what they've got to say, I still think. I understand what I understand why he's doing it, and I do not want the Eddie out rhetoric to keep going because he deserves to get back. He got fuck all in January. Let's be honest, right? Ah, uh, but that was for the PFI got, to, to spend money. Darren, he got fuck. He got. Nothing. I know that, but he's got. He had, he had one striker and a, and a crop striker who's never fit anyway. He had no midfielders. We they need they owe him us in the Premier League to back him. And if he's and if he doesn't fucking do it, then he doesn't do it. And they can get rid of him. But fuck me, you can't get rid of him now, in my opinion. And if anyone wants to come at us, do you know what it is? Go and give a fuck. 
Barry. George, George, <laughs> we'll, we'll miss what you had to say because there was a there was a couple of in, uh, in uh, issues. So, George, what did you make of the game of the weekend? We've, we've got to go back over it. I apologise for that, but no, I'm, right. not, I'm not interrupting um, George's speech. He's got too many fans <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> um, well, I, it, it disappointing because we lost the two goals that could have been prevented. Um, and Ian's just highlighted, you know, a, a centre-back that was regarded as one of the best in the Premier League last year has suddenly lost the ability to clear the ball out of his penalty area. In fact, clear it more, than ten, more than 10 yards. You know, it, awful, awful. And uh, uh, But there were positives, the, 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 the young ones. When Hall came on, didn't he look like a footballer? I thought he was brilliant. And Miley showed that he's in the right place as well. They get an extra yard of pace for Miley. We've got a world-class player on my hands. At the moment, he's good. With an extra yard of pace, he'd be brilliant. He'd be magic. So, um, wholly disappointing. We didn't... We, Ian's right. We didn't play that badly. It just we didn't have the um, the ability to match them uh, man for man. And, and, and eventually, it was it was going to... They were over going to come, overcome with... But the d disappointing thing about that is the overcomer were two goals that were very preventable. And that 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 really sticks in me crow a little bit. Um, not a little bit, a big bit. Um, so, um, yeah, lot, lots of uh, lot, huge disappointment out of it. The club's very important to Newcastle United. And, uh, you know, I've had the pleasure of seeing my family go to uh, three, three finals where we won. And I've been to a finals in modern times where we didn't win but uh, um, yeah it's so important to it and uh, um, keeps keeps the interest alive and I'm Steve's saying that the season's I don't think the season is over the, the season will be over when somebody says we can't get a, we can't get a prize and uh, although I have to say the, the Tottenham manager knocked, knocked it on the head for me the other day when he said when they said to him are you are you going for Europe Europe and get fourth place and he said they don't give medals for fourth place and I thought that's that's very true that's very true but financially for the club and storing up points for the future for Europe we need to be there we need to be at that table and taking part so hugely disappointed so lots of positives but um just not enough to overcome the best club side in the world, in my view. It's as simple as that. Barry, the season was never going to be all about beating Man City in the quarterfinal. It's disappointing. I think we all accepted once the draw came out that that was going to be the end of the season. You never know. Yeah. It could have been a positive. But, yeah, what's your feeling after, after the weekend? Yeah, I, I think, obviously, watch the game. And it did feel a bit like you, Steve. I thought, God, this is it. It's like, this is our last chance to do anything this season. We, we never looked like we are going to beat them. I think Man City, like a couple of people said in the chat there, they could have quite easily upped another gear and they could have scored a lot more than two goals against us. Um, totally agree with George. I thought Paul looked really good. I was over the moon to see Anderson back on and he's he's starting to look like he's not that far away from full fitness. Um We've got 10 games to go. Anything could happen in the last 10 games. Um, if how can get them playing, I do think right the way across the team, I think there's players playing with injuries. I think Botman's injured. I think uh, Isaac's not 100% fit. I think there's Willick's not ready. He's been pushed back in the side to try and create some pace, but I don't think he's 100% fit. Um It's just one of those things, isn't it? You, nobody really... I mean, what did they say? At the last 60 games at, uh, that he had, they've won something like 59 home games or something out the last 60. Nobody goes there and expects to beat them. It's just, it's one of those things. It's just been bad luck the teams we've been pulled against. And I know we turned them over in the in the, in the the other cup competition, but that doesn't happen very often with somebody of City's quality. I mean, for me, a huge plus point again is Haaland still didn't score. You know, how many... Right. How many teams can say that? They've played them that many times this season and he's never scored against them. There'll not be many be able to do that. Scored I, once, I think, at St. James's Park. Yeah, that's, but he's he's banged in goals right, left and centre against other teams. I, don't I think, think get, are, get him away into the heat, hopefully get some fitness back into the legs and, and go again when he comes back. I think we've got 10 games to go and 
see what we can do. At the end of the day, it's, it's like you said, Steve, it's much better than some of the crap we used to watch before. You know, if you rewind three or four years ago, some of the terrible performances and terrible games we used to watch, it's much better than that. Yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed we're not challenging for Europe, but we'll build on and go on and go again next year. Kev, I'm not even going to ask you the question, which I normally ask you, where did we go wrong? Because Man City is one of the best teams in the world, if not the best team in the world. So, for Newcastle United to lose 2-0... It doesn't look uh, an embarrassment, but I mean, overall, your assessment of that game? Uh, where to start? Um, I think we showed City too much respect. I think we're playing with a lot of fear um, in terms of as a team and, and as individuals. Um, I've said before that I don't think the message is getting across into players that what the coaching staff want them to do. Yes, I understand the shape and I've been crying out to change the shape, but I think he got his team selection wrong in terms of certain particular players in certain certain areas of the park. Again, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have played Jamal Lascelles because he's playing up, up against a technical team and he's not a good technical footballer. So therefore there's a big question mark and red flag for me why he's starting. Um, Cause and I would have played Shaw Botman burn across the back three. Um, and played Lewis Hall on the left side uh, as a left wing back. Um, and that's how I would have worked and kept everything the same. But that would be the, the, the change would in, in, in not even play long stuff. I, I think he, he's obviously we know he's playing with an injury, but the games are passing him by and he feels like he's got no choice but to play him. And I don't know why or what. It's just something, something's aloof there to me. Something's not right within that decision-making process, but he played him and he did the game just passing by, in my opinion. But anyway, um, the season's not over, in my opinion, but it's very close to being over. I mean, it's if we get beat off West Ham, then I can say, okay, done. Then that's it. You know, this was a, not a free hit, essentially, but it is a free hit where it's the FA Cup. Anything can happen. Well, look at Coventry at Wolves. Look at the game yesterday, Man United, Liverpool. You know, brilliant games of football where anything it was on a knife edge the whole game and that's what i was hoping for in our game but it never happened um it was just very much playing a low block play on the counter-attack leave uh isaac isolated like gordon run around like a headless chicken in and around him but we couldn't get the ball we couldn't keep it we couldn't possess um but Outside of all of that, the two goals that we did concede was very poor defensively and completely agree with George in that um, they're very, very preve uh, preventable in terms of when that ball drops or the ball shifts from left to right on the edge of your 18-yard box, yes, and the, you, you move with the ball, but then you have to actually engage with that player with the ball. You have to get in front of him. So... Dangling a leg out to block a shot, which could go anywhere. If you watched uh, the Liverpool yesterday, it was completely different. They just stood still and they didn't move. They just let the ball hit them. Our defenders are trying to clear a ball that's coming at them at a fair rate of pace and speed to try then to try and get something on it. Why? So just stand there and take take the hit, let the ball go. I mean, for the second one was comical in terms of goalkeeping and all the above was the bottom own goal slash there, whoever scored uh, Bernardo still the second. Why does Botman have to get his head in the way? And then because the Bravka would made that would have made that save. So again, it's decision making inside the 18 yard box. Um also just what I wrote down is the gap between our back four and midfield five, what it was, was massive. You could have built a, a council estate inside of that space. A because they were we were pressing as a as a what six seven. Was it was it not a back nine? What? Was it not a back nine? Pretty much by the end of the game it was a back nine, but never mind. Um you know, so the 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 gap was massive, but then when the, our back four pushed up, there was still that gap in between our back three and five, six, seven, eight players. Then there was space in behind. So Man City done very well in terms of a double pivot with Kovacic and Rodri, who's probably one of the best players in the Premier League, or if not the world at the minute. 
So Rod then they're picking Rodri, passes Rod, off. Rod, Rod, Rodri's shit. It's not me. I'm sorry. He's not. I'll tell you what. I would have. I would tell you. I would have him in my side. I was side. joking. I was joking. Oh, best. don't get me started. Best, best time. Oh, don't really get me really started because I could go off on one because it's terrible. Um, just, but yeah. So in all in all, were we expecting anything? No. But what was the 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 opportunity there? Absolutely, it was, and we didn't take yeah. it. Yeah, and and that's the that's that's the more frustrating thing, and that's the agitating thing that would actually didn't absolutely. I can't believe it, that it didn't look there. like they cared enough to get through the next round. I think they were thinking about this, this Dubai trip, which I think it should be cancelled and they should be back at Benton. Uh, there should be there should be training. Thing. There should be training and cheating solution. Daz, that's what Daz, you said. Daz, I'm going to come to you now because it's too long for you to wait after what you just said. To what? What's, what's your views, Daz? Yeah, it's, we got beat by the best team in the world. It, it, it's not, not to be ashamed of, but it shows you how far our players are off. We need to get rid of the rubbish, and like, Miley and Anderson are not the level. Miley needs to go back to the road. Wow, wow. I'm sorry, George, that's how you I, I, I don't think Miley's ready for the next level yet. You, for the future, two years' time, Look, look, look at Phil Ford. And Phil Ford was brought in slowly, but gradually. He had better players around him. We haven't, our midfield haven't got world class players to learn Miley, to, to bring him in slowly. He's been forced in the first team. And, I, and I, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of Anderson. I don't think he's world class. He needs a hell of a lot. He needs to improve. Um, do, you again, think better, do you think he's better than? Do you think he's better than Sean Longstaff? That is the question. I no, I think I think I would, I would sell long start in the summer. I mean, I've, well, hold, hold on, hold on. Last so, year, Sean, Sean Longstaff starts at the weekend, and it, it does. I'm not having to go at you, but my my mindset is after what Eddie Howe said at the weekend. Sean Longstaff had an injection in his foot. He's he's playing through the injury, like uh, um, I don't he's playing that. through I, the pain I, barrier. I just don't think he's the level. So then he starts. So then he starts him. Then, he's like, he's on, does, then, does, then he brings on Anderson. Then he brings on Anderson and Miley, who blow, both look better than them. And before you, answer, I don't know. I, I, I think does, if Man City had another level, I think if, if we made them angry by see a pop score one goal, I think would have would have got before four, 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 five. And I've, um, again, he's, he's tried to see in the system, see if that worked. It didn't work, but but fine. But the deflections, yeah. They could have went out. They could have, do you know what I mean? Botman, I, I, we all play football. You kind of block the ball and it's just went the wrong way. I think Botman just been lucky. Yeah, but why, why block, why try and block the ball? That's, but think, that's but, but, but I, play football, I play football. I play football. If I go and block the ball, I was thinking, let block the ball. It's just actually instant to block the ball. If you go block the ball, you've got to get your body down the line of it. You can't just stick your leg out or stick your head out. It, it I know, but I'm anyway. seeing it, and now it's already, I, it's already seen. If you're if you're on a football pitch, you're still going to do it. I play football far side, left side. I wouldn't play football if I'm going to block the ball. I'm still going to try and to get a deflection on it or hit it. They like, stop me going somewhere. It's it's your natural instinct when you play football. I don't care what level you play at. It's your natural instinct to play football. And you still see, you still see it on all football games today. Every player will always take a leg, try and block. Does, does can I say one thing to you? You know I love you the most. Yeah. You know I love you, even though oh, you don't you're playing. But the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen is Steve Wraith absolutely fucking mortal there, absolutely <laughs> pissed out of his face, <laughs> and, uh, and actually outwitting you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, but, still, but I'm still in control of the show. So, Alan, 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 you're you're as <laughs> a voice of reason. What, what was your view? What was your view of the game at the weekend? It was well, spinning. <laughs> Two point large. I agree with a, a lot of what the, the uh, other lads have said. I expected four to... nil, so we got two nil, so it was respectable. Um, it's what Kevin said. Having the cells, you know, why are these players still here? And I'm not. I'm with Ian in a larger part. What he said about the how out brigade. There's so many players that are still at the club that are just aren't up to scratch. You know. There's 12 players I would get rid of tomorrow. But how can it? Alan, do you think, Alan, do you you think that Daz is the most miserable person on this I mean, podcast now? 
I'm, 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 not, I'm not the best kid. I'm not, I'm, I'm not being negativity. I'm positive. But got beat by the best team in the world. Now you're football. Not be not, not to be ashamed of. We've got beat by the best team in the world. We need to just be forget about and move on next game. That's I mean, my opinion. We've got beat. I do, I do agree with it. I don't agree with you, Steve. I think there's a massive amount to play for. I think the season's... And I agree with Kevin. I think the next two games with West Ham and Everton will prove it. If if we win them next two games, so frustrated because Tottenham got hammered at the weekend. Yeah. And if we're beating Chelsea, that was the most upsetting yeah. part for me, getting beat off Chelsea last week because it would give away a little bit of momentum. Everybody expected we'd get beat uh, on Saturday. Everybody did. But it's a way, and again, I sympathise with Kevin because all the Earth quarter finals were exciting, great to watch. Hours you could have switched it off after half an hour once the second goal went in. Um, it was just you know, it was a never we were going to get beat. Where the other quarter finals, every team went for it, and it was so more much more exciting. But the main, main point is get get the support of lads now with 10 games to go, they're all cup finals, they're all winnable. That's the thing on paper, they're winnable. But unfortunately, we're defence, we're midfield, and we're forward line are not clicking as a unit. Or each one's got different things that have gone wrong this season. But the main thing is, a lot of people on Twitter after the match were wanting how well he's run his course. Get a grip, I would say. Yes, we can all, you know, argue and complain about how and his decisions, but he's working majority of the time with players that have been here. And so finished with 10th, 12th, 13th, 14th. We've bought, we've bought four or five players in equality. Bruno, you know, Tenali, which I still think will be uh, quality. Harvey Barnes, Tino. And what, what's he still working with? We've got to get rid of Richie, Dummett, Frazier, Hayden, people that are Maybe. still on the fringes. And that's not including the players that you would like to get rid of. Like out so long stuff tomorrow, but I keep done it, you know. So at the end of the bye, day, bye, a lot bye, of stuff bye, in, bye, the, in the back room, anyway. A squad player and burn squad player for next season. If he buys four quality players in the summer, then we've got a decent squad to go forward. What's a successful season next year? Lads? Is it fourth and not win any trophy Be, again, like how it did last year? Because you know. Everybody's come for how they get sacked. Wait, what I see a lot of social media fans are calling them to get sacked. I, it don't, I, go, it don't go the match. You know, I, I just think he needs two or three years at least to rotate this squad. And he's hardly started, lads. Hardly started. The game on Saturday, I knew it. Uh, I put a point to Steve during the week. Last year, we won eight games away. That was only the third time we've done that in 73 years, lads. Let that sink in. Three, apart from our promotion years, we have never won more than eight games in a season, apart from three years in 73 years. And he did that. So with, I would say, a, you know, a middle team where we are now at the minute, apart from the likes of Isaac, Bruno, and hopefully Tino is a bit of quality he needs to add that quality with Tenali in the summer and move on. But I would like to know what your thoughts are going forward in the next year. What would be success? The trophy or top four? But I'll leave it with that, lads. I'm not disappointed about Saturday. I thought it was a given. As soon as the draw was made three weeks ago, I knew we were out. But it was a Chelsea game. And going forward, the next two games, like Kevin said about West Ham, if we get be against West Ham, then I will be start to believe the season is over. But there are 10 winnable games there. If we win three in a row, Tottenham and Aston Villa like, have set in the shows before, have got the top three to play. That's what's so frustrating and disappointing, getting drawn with Luton and Bournemouth and getting beat off Chelsea. We could have still been in that frame for top four. Yeah. But it is what it is. The team hasn't performed. End of. Spenny, lots of positivity in the chat for you tonight. You have, you've had to wait for all those people to have their opinion, but lots of people saying, I can't wait to hear what Spenny says. Spenny, give us your opinion. And they've had really good opinions as well, the lads have. 
<laughs> so I've been on the drink and my pies knows where I'm at, where I've been as well. So I don't know how the hell he knew where I was in the laptop to go all up down. I haven't got a clue. Right. The game against Man City, two on goals. Simple as that. We got beat. Two on goals. Fair enough. We matched them, like George said, most of the game. I agree with that. Isaac especially missed two J chances. So we're not that far away from that game, especially. we were, There was world-class players against Premier League players in that game. And that was it. And for me, where things are going wrong, things are not going wrong with Eddie Brown's door. Things are going wrong with the people in charge of Newcastle, the ECAU and all that. That's where it's going wrong. The CEO should be going out in January and saying that he's going to sell players, but it's a transfer window because to get other players in. What's the players going to feel like when they say that they think they're going to get sold? What are they going to play the rest of this like the rest of the season? You know what I mean? Isn't that in their mind? It's his fault at the door. Nobody else's. They've had two weeks to stop this job out and back and back Eddie. And they haven't backed Teddy. They give him players he doesn't want to play because he doesn't think they're good enough to play. Fair enough, we've had bad injuries this season. Fair enough, we've had bad injuries this season, yes. But it's not Eddie Howe's fault this year as Joe Cass is going at the moment in these competitions. It's the CAO board. They've got the wrong people in charge because they're not getting in the sponsorships. But they're supposed to be promised the sponsorships. And last in the beginning of the last the end of last season, I went to a forum and I voted for the price increase for the season tickets. And on, on an understanding that the money <laughs> spent in the in both windows, the upcoming windows, and that hasn't been fulfilled. So that's your that's the problem in your castle at the moment. Not Eddie Al, not the players, it's the people that's in charge. And that's my rank gone. Okay, God, you Pab off your chest. Pablo, what's your thoughts? Let's just all lose our. <laughs> I, I agree with what Benny's saying, but right, so I'll try and take a different take on it because it's pointless going through the Man City game because the lads have pretty much nailed it. The hard part about all this for us is the barometer is our great finish last year. So subconscious in our mind is the fact that we think we're going to be finishing fourth. If you look at the squad, I think, personally, I think we're round about where we should be with the players we've got. Yes. So it's an hard one. The only thing that I worry about, and I'm not certainly not Eddie Al out brigade, I'm actually for him, but he has worried me or he's, he's confused me recently because if you look at the Chelsea game, for instance, I mean, I've been shouting for Tino to have a chance for fucking God knows how long, as I'm sure millions have. But we give him a chance against Chelsea and he's the best player on the pitch for us. Same at weekend, we talk about the Man City game. The young lads who come on, you know, Almiron, I thought Murphy was all right. The young lads come on. Lewis Hall was superb. Yeah, and we're all sat giving it that. So why isn't the manager seeing this and giving these lads a chance? If we're saying that players are on their arse, like Botman, you know, Longstaff, he's the manager that sees these day in, day out. Now, the proof is now in the pudding. I agree with the lads that... You know, maybe he doesn't trust them. You know, surely now, surely now seeing it, you should trust them. So I know what you're saying, Steve, about the season being over. For me, if he continues to do what he's doing and playing your long staffs and your botmans, the season is fucking over. However, if he takes heed of the last two or three weeks and looks at the players that have come on and actually looked top, he's got to change it. He's got to give these lads a chance because otherwise it, we will end up finishing fucking 10th. Yeah. So I think it's key moment, you know, at this time, is he going to take note of what he's seeing? If he doesn't, that could be a problem because that's the manager's job at the end of the day, isn't it? But more importantly, Spenny, you didn't review where you'd been this afternoon. Right. Um, more importantly, Spenny, was it you all, all night, eyes only? Ah. Where? In an afternoon. <laughs> uh, Daz, coming to you before the ad break, what was your oh, take okay. on the, on, on the weekend's me. event? You've done yeah, these. I've just seen Spenny's titties. <laughs> I've done you. Oh, you've done. Were your last? Your last on my screen. 
He's been my lass has no eyes for anyone other than War George. I didn't <laughs> want to miss. I didn't want to miss anybody out. So that's, oh, you see that we get missed. You, you must have dipped out and dipped in. So as, Did as, I, as double as, check, Charles. Double check. It is, <laughs> it is. It is a double take. So as always on NUFC matters, we'll have an ad break. We'll be back after this. A big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins. Go to their website, skipsandbins.com. Email inquiries at skipsandbins.com or telephone 0800 25 45 25 3. Easy contract free and pay as you go waste collection. Thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources, handmade in Cumbria. Go to their website, mrvickies.co.uk. Email info at mrvickies.co.uk or telephone 01768 210102. Thanks to United Group Travel. Go to their website, unitedgrouptravel.com. Email info at unitedgrouptravel.com or phone 01670 632 460 or mobile 0791 666 4174. They're a local company from Morbeth and there are no strangers on our tours, just friends you haven't met yet. Big thanks to Media Arts for all the help with the video side of things. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button under the video. Click the thumb up to like the video and click share to share to your social media. If you want to help the channel financially, you can pay a one-off £25 fee. You get a cup, a scarf, a pen and a membership card and entry into the NUFC Matters monthly draw. Email john at nufcmatters.com for more details. Or if you've got a smartphone, scan the QR code now and it takes you straight to the membership pack. We also support the food bank on this channel. Go to nufcfansfoodbank.co.uk and you'll find a match day bucket. You can make a donation virtually today. You can also find us on iTunes, Spotify and other podcast providers. We also do events during the year. NUFC Matters Live will be at the O2 City Hall on Friday the 2nd of August for an evening with Rob Lee, one night in Antwerp. Tickets start at £15 and you can get them from Ticketmaster. .co.uk. An evening with the entertainers takes place on Friday the 24th of January 2025 at the Tyne Theatre and Opera House in Newcastle. Telephone 0844 249 1000 or visit the website Tyne Theatre and Opera House.uk to buy tickets today. You can also catch me on the Northeast Footy Breakfast Show live on Toon Radio weekdays 7 till 9 a.m. on DAB. Smart speakers and the two new care.com. Welcome back to an NUFC Matters, the fans forum. I've got a question here from Tom Dixon. He goes, uh, Well, Forrest have received a four point deduction by breaching Premier League's profitability and sustainability rules. What do you make of that, George? Four Terrible. points. When you bear in mind that Everton got Terrible. Two, Everton got a, 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 a points deduction. Then they had a review. I mean, where do we stand with this? Should we just scrap it all together? Yes, because if if that's what's happening to Nottingham Forest and Everton and others, then Manchester City should be relegated. We're talking about mm-hmm. half a dozen little things for Forest. Manchester City have got something like 150 things against them. And you know what's going to happen? It's going to get drawn out that long with lawyers. They'll get away with a whole lot. But, but Everton, Nottingham Forest, Leicester um, will will get panned because the Premier League want to show how tough they are. I think the directors of those clubs need to get together, and I think our directors as well now, and say, hey, it's time to stop all this tripe. You know, let, let's start let's start from a, the, a flat play, a, a, a plain, same playing field, uh, with a level playing field rather. Rather than all this rubbish that's uh, that's being bandied about at the moment, um, you see the the other thing is that all, all the other fans in the country used to think, oh, it, it's just Newcastle that's grumbling. Well, they're now seeing it isn't just Newcastle that's grumbling; it's everybody else. Well, your directors voted for this system. Your directors put your hand up when the big six wanted the system brought in, and uh, you're getting what your your directors voted for. So they're who you should be chasing as well. But I, I think it's diabolical, and it, it, you know, I feel for the fans of those clubs because they, they're having um, to put up with stuff that they've had nothing to do with, nothing to do with them at all, uh, just bad management from their own club, but ridiculous 
um, corrupt management. I use the word at the at the Premier League. So no, I think it's I think it's it's dreadful, absolutely awful, and uh, I still have the of the opinion that unless there's a reason why it shouldn't happen, that Amanda Stavely, Stavely, Stavely will be the one that will put that right before she does anything else for Newcastle United, like she did with the Live Golf. They, they weren't gonna, that was never going to get put right. Well, they, they did. They put it right in a couple of months when they sat down and, and started throwing lawyers at it. And I think that's what needs to happen in, in the Premier League now. Um, somebody needs to challenge it properly, not, uh, not half-heartedly. So, yeah, I think it's awful, Steve. Absolutely dreadful. Ian, are you there? Is anybody there? Ian, are you there? He's obviously with his lass. Uh, Barry, <laughs> what's he doing? <laughs> Emily, are you there? Uh, Barry, what's your thoughts on the four points deduction? <laughs> oh, he's always there. Emily, are you there? Emily's always here. <laughs> now again, now, now again, some kind of like break. Steve, <laughs> before we go any further, I've just sent you some money. Yeah, Christina, there we go. There it is. Wow, that's that's why you get second all the time. And let's give me your money, bribery. <laughs> That's why you get second all the time. Isn't it? Is that for where Eggs Why? Spenny. Why are we getting a repeat on this? Right, I'm going to take him out. Barry, I'm going to come to you, then I'm going to bring him back in. Because we're now okay. getting a repeat on this system. There's something clearly going on. But it's great. He sent 4 99 to the channel. So, Barry, <laughs> what, what, what's your thought on that? I, I, I totally agree with George. I think it's becoming a joke. I mean, the, the whole scenario with Forrest... They're having a go at them because they know Forest won't won't probably legally challenge it. That's why they're leaving Man City alone because they know Man City will take them straight to the court if they do anything about it. I mean, it said straight away that Forest were going to try and appeal against it, but it, it just makes it laughing stock, Steve. It's getting it's getting out of hand. I mean, are they going to like George says? Are they going to relegate Man City to the third or fourth division to make up for the amount that they've spent over it? Are they going to take Chelsea's? license off them so they can never play again for the amount of money they've whittled away and ripped people off with it's just it's becoming an absolute farce um and even then it's, it's like it's the length of time it's taken to sort these things out as well i mean how long will it be before man city have anything done against them if anything will it be another two seasons they're using the excuse that it's more complicated than forests it can't be that hard to work out, surely. We all know how much money they've been spending and how much they're supposed to spend. It's nah, nah. Somebody needs to step in. Um, like you say, or or do it legally and say, look, this this isn't fair competition. It's got to be put a stop there. Your your thoughts, Kev? Just what Barry said, really, it's like making the mockery of the Premier League. Uh, or the, in the whole English system, essentially. Um, you know, it's Robin Peter to pay Paul, essentially. You know, if we can't, even we, yes, we've got the, we're not the richest club in the world, but we've got the richest owners in the world by far. But then you're hamstrung by regulations and red tape that you have to go through. But everybody, again, what the lads of other, other lads and other shows have said is, you can still operate under debt and you can still operate and and spend under debt. Yeah. Um, if, if this is a regular person, if I'm heavily under debt, I can't then go buy a car. I then can't go buy a house because I've got that much debt against me. I can't do the same things that anybody else would do. It, it, it makes no sense. I mean, with the, the Everton thing, uh, uh, sorry, the Nottingham Forest thing, what I've just read, I think Nick DeMargo's getting involved in that. I've just seen that. Um, so, again, they're going to repeal. I would. Why not? But how far is it going to get? Probably not very far. But, you know, yes, the Man City thing's complicated, but this was done before a lot of new regulations were put into place. So the, those rules were different back when all these charges occurred so again it's just making a mockery of the english game um <clears throat> like i said i think it was a, last week or a couple of weeks ago 
um, and Jordy's here, Jordy's there. It's like you can see with the new your wafer eighty five percent wage ratios and things like that to now going to salary caps and now to going to spending limits on salary caps and how much players earn and how much you know send out thing within the group. It, it's quite complicated, but uh, you know you can you only have this amount of money and this is what you can only spend and that's it. And if you go over that salary cap, then and that's the way I think it will go, unfortunately. And it makes it again another mockery of what the Premier League is and what the English football game has become. Um, it, it's making it very elitist, it's making it very us and them. So if we, as Newcastle United, you know, essentially it's anti competition laws, it's, it's anti competition because if we can't spend, then or anybody for that matter, under outside the big six, if we can't spend, then that, that we have major problems within the game, um, which is unfortunate because you know we want to see the best players in the world. We we'll want to see the the, the the best games every weekend. It doesn't matter which team it is. I mean, I'll sit and watch anything really. To be honest, if it's a good game, I'll sit and watch it, and that's what we want as a product. And I think that's what the Premier League have to figure out. What's your product? What's your product value? across the world or within the, within england within the united kingdom you know so they have to reevaluate in my opinion how their what's what what, what their market's going to look like because i think they'll lose they could lose sponsorship they could lose all sorts of things across the world across with what how they make their money and again it's going to go to the top table as always and they're just going to get away with anything you know, it's just like I'm an only child, but it's like your big brother getting away with everything and you've got to suffer the consequences just based on their actions versus what you actually want to do and can do but can't. So it, it's just sad. It, it's just, you know, it's just sad at the end of the day. It's not football like I knew it and probably George knew it and everybody on this panel knows yeah. it. So it, it's just a, a very sad day to be perfectly honest. But good luck to Forrest and hopefully, you know, recoup their four points and uh, reduce it to two because that's what ev happened to Everton or whatever it looks like. Even a point deduction, you never know. But who knows? But it's the Premier League. You just never know what's going to happen from one day to the next without that, that uh, bunch of uh, higher up elites who pretty much got nothing. No, they don't know anything about football. And, 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 and yeah. it's like George George Bank. Sorry, it's just it, it just it, it's about the fans. It's a it's a game for for fans. Yeah, and, and they're, they're taking it all away. Does time is it time to to think about changing FFP or just scrapping it all together? Um, I think you're hitting on everything. You need to scrap it because it's it's only going to get worse. I I feel for the fans for the Forest fans and the um, fans. But for the club and the owner, said that full, we all knew they were spending money left, right, and centre. Desperation to stay in the league. And the club, I've, I've, I've got this issue for the chairman because they, they spend the money. If they're not watching, if they're not watching the, what they're doing wrong, I've got no sympathy for them. Where it's, it, it, the fans are for you, because they, they paid their hard, their hard earned money, money to go and watch them and support them. But, the chairman of both clubs are spending the money they want to be in the premiership. The most they must be in the premiership, but they're they're spending the money. So I've got nice sympathy for the for the clubs themselves. I, I hope they don't get any points back. This is how come Evan got six points? Where's Forest six points? They should they and it probably for was worse. So no, not for me. I've I'm gonna be ruthless. And do not, do not give any points back. That's my I opinion. This. I love this, by the way. I like this. <laughs> Barry Small. <laughs> no, 310 watching 301 super. Oh, did you do <laughs> Steve? I, uh, Steve, I thought you were. I thought you were laughing at some fucker went just. No, I was. But then I seen. Then I went, Then I seen what Alan said. That's a brilliant. That's that, that is. is that is message of the night. Um, I've been getting yeah. rinsed. I've been getting rinsed by someone called Dave in the chat. I don't know who he is. He <laughs> doesn't like me. He doesn't like me at all. But Dave, I will say to you, I'm very sorry, and I'll try better in future. Um, and I and <laughs> and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna donate the, uh, the the pay that I get today of Steve Ray 
Back to the <laughs> back, back to any charity of your choice, mate. <laughs> yeah, for us, for our new striker. <laughs> yeah. We all love you, Ian. Don't worry. Right, so so far it's been deducted with four points. Everton got deducted ten. Then it's been reduced. Is it time to scrap FFP, Ian? Bollocks to that. I've just spent four ninety nine asking you to do the a tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a pheasant plucker. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is it time though? Is it time? FFP. Time you FFP. said oh, you're not a pheasant plucker. I'm a pheasant plucker's son, and you're always plucking pheasants. To I'll, the pheasant I'll do it next week. Um, All right. But... <laughs> is it time? Um, well, FFP. Well, you know what I think about FFP. The truth is, FFP should be NFFP, which is not fit for purpose. It's an absolute. It's uh, the, the, whichever way it, when it when it was it was brought in for a reason and the reason that they brought it in was actually a legitimate reason so that people couldn't come in and misuse clubs and and and, and uh and basically send clubs out of business but as soon as it came in the cartel and the and let's be honest the the epl all they're bothered about is pounds and pence they are not they they, they you know as much as they show newcastle they want to show Newcastle to shows get beat. They want the the. Uh, oh no, no, I'm not even going to read that. Whatever you're putting on there, I'm not reading it. Um, they, they, <laughs> they want. <laughs> they want. They want. They want the big six, as they call them, and that's what they call them, um, to 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 keep pushing on because that's where they get their their biggest views from. But let's be honest, the tune are on nearly all the time. Last season, how many games were we not on the TV? How many games got changed? We're, we're box office because everyone wants to either see us win or lose. Um, and these, um, I'm doing this for you, Dave. I'm trying not to swear whoever you are. Um, and my dad was called Dave. He's in, and he didn't have a problem with swearing, so he's not come back from the grave. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, like, like the, the, these, these, um, the, the FFP rules have been bent now and changed around, so it, it it protects the it protects the clubs that have a bigger revenue, and keeps down all the other clubs. And it's it's a uh, <laughs> nice one, Ian Brownlee. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's well, I'm always pissed, so no one can fucking whinge at me. <laughs> it's a Monday. Consistency. <laughs> <Consistent. laughs> yeah, do you know why? <laughs> No, I think it's. I think. I think it is. It's now been proven, and a lot of other clubs, fortunately, fortunately, a lot of other clubs have cottoned on to the fact that this is now just protecting the the bigger, richer clubs, who, by the way, no. are generally all in massive debt. Well, you know, the the ones the ones you're calling richer clubs are a billion pounds in debt, a or two, billion George, in debt. two, you know, two billion. Even my missus credit card's not that bad, George. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Alan, Alan, what's your thoughts on, on Forrest's four point reduction? I mean, you know, Everton got six well well Everton got ten. It reduced to six. But this this you might as well scrap the whole thing if this is the, the kind of the the formation that we're in. Or Newcastle might as well say, let's go and blow the budget. Yeah. Well, there's a the idea and that's Steve, but uh, uh, you hit the nail on the head. Where's the different points deductions come from? Is, was it started at the start of the season that you would get X amount of points deducted at the start of the season, or what? I just don't understand why Everton got 10 points when you go into liquidation, you get nine. Um, and Alan, just, Alan the other thing, think about this there's a hundred and fucking whatever 15 charges against Chelsea, right? Man City. Why not? Why not? Why not? But sorry, against Man City. Why not pick the the top five of them charges that they know that they can get them on, and just do them for them? Mm -hmm. As much as I, I listen, I hate the scouts, Mackums. I I cannot stand Everton, right? But you know what I mean. Like they're picking on the little, the shitty little teams that they can't do anything about it, and they're doing them up the. Up the I, I disagree. Evan, Evan spent the money on the own back. The, the, the chairman, they wouldn't have spent the money. 
I've got nice sympathy for heaven. I know, no, no, no sympathy for him, but you know, like, like. So I know, but I, I, I don't think I don't think they're putting on heaven, no. It's these need to put on Man City. They brought the rules. Well, they well, chose to brought the rules. The is, there's so many charges that they can't do anything. I'm about not saying, but I've got this in so complicated. No. Well, just pick the ones that are fucking not complicated, then. I mean, people say like in the, you know, like the papers and wherever that uh, Man City shouldn't be, you know, relegated to the fourth division. What happened to Rangers only a few years exactly. ago? They exactly. They were relegated to the fourth division, and they had to take the punishment and lie, lie down, get relegated to the fourth division, and they had to work their way up. No club should be above the law. And, you know, like to me, I, I'm with Daz and I'm a, a lot of the lads on here. I feel sorry for the fans, but the owners, these rules were kept in place, like like you said, Ian. They keep well, it's, one rule for, it's one rule for one club yeah. and one rule for another club, and it depends where I mean, you are in the league. I mean, Chelsea came out with their financial statement and said there were 90 million. I don't know how it works, lads, so I'm not going to go with them. Maybe people who have got general knowledge, there were 90 million in debt. Yet their subsidiary company was 700 million pound in debt, but it didn't belong to Chelsea. So that's why they, they spent all that money. And I'm thinking, how did they get away with that? You know, by saying that they spent 90 million for the, the council's share. So I'm thinking, there's some cook in the books here somewhere along the link as far as Chelsea's concerned. Man City 115 charges, like you say, Ian. Just get the ones that you know, are relevant and do Big them five. and get and get them relegated. Um, you know, it's it's sad when one team's getting four points, one's getting team six. I do believe, you know, the teams that are getting affected now and where we are with PSR rules. They will, they will want to change them, and the sooner the better. And hopefully, they will get swapped in the future. That's what only hope they get to the top lads. Because unfortunately, if they stay the same, like Kevin said about the the captain of the wages and that, it's it's designed for you never to get to the top. To be honest with you, Spenny, you've waited a while, and lots of people, lots of your fans in the chat, <laughs> Come on, said. Come on, Spenny! You are you are you, you are the only fans are waiting for you. you Come on, Spenny. <laughs> Spenny, what do you have you? Four points, four points off Forest today. Manchester City, 115 allegations, it has to be said, standing against them, but four points off Forest when there was ten points off Everton originally, and then it got reduced to six. What what's your views Maybe on he that? He's got no fans on here, has he? Cool. <laughs> He's got plenty of fans. Who? Well, yeah, I hope I'm the fans. Right, I'll wait until everybody finishes and I'll start talking. Good luck. Right, um, <laughs> the, the, the four points that uh, Forrest has been deducted was supposed to be six points because they compromised. They went down to four. So I can't well, say anything. Did they apologise, Benny? No, they've <laughs> given more. They give, they, they, what they did, they helped them with the investigation more than Evan. So, Evan, so, when, oh, Evan, so, the, so, so in our in northeast terms, they're a grass. Yes, they are. Near enough. Anyway, um, it's absolutely the way football is going in the last five or six years ago with this scenario was going on and that. It's absolutely disgraceful for me. It's not competitive, that Premier League anymore, the way it's going. Um, with the new FFP, it's supposed to have been coming in place next season. It works out of about 430 million. We'll have something like that to spend, Newcastle, because of all the sponsorships and that coming in. And obviously Adidas, and you've got your, your prize money from the Champions League and your Premier League position, which I think we'll still get maybe 7 or 8 in the league. Um, little clubs like Forest, it's absolutely a joke because the salt of the clubs and the, what they did in the 80s and 70s was absolutely remarkable. And that should be still going in this, this league, like Lower Leicester won the Premier League. It's just stopping, this is just stopping this happening to teams. Yeah. That's all I've got to say. I'm not going to apologise for shouting earlier on, but I'm just well, you annoyed. Need, well, you do need to apologise, Spenny. I'm fans... just annoyed and I'm passionate about my football club. The There's fans, two fans, are... the fans I've for two things in my about... life. I've got two things in my life, Steve. Family comes first and then football. And that's... And that's, that's, and that's not a bad thing at all, mate. That's not a bad thing at all. Yeah. Lee, we'll come to you. 
to end the show. Um, no, you know what, Barry? What's what? Uh, what? Barry? Barry. As Barry said, but you see, this is the problem when people get moved around my screen. And when I'm not, <laughs> when I'm not Thomas Mendes, and bearing in mind on my screen, Barry's now next to George at the top of the screen. So I'll come to Barry. So oh, Liam, Barry. if Barry's been on, man, I've been on. Barry, Barry swapped places with me, didn't he? Yes, yeah. I was right. So Liam, so Liam, stop writing them up. Fucking musical chairs. Exactly. So, so the, the main thing is that I'm professional. If you want to keep your, Ian, 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 if you want, Ian, if you want to keep your place on the fans forum, it's the best thing to say. Um, <laughs> give them a fiver. <laughs> no, Lee. if you want to keep me and Lee on the fans forum, you've got to take us to this thing. Lee sent us this thing. <laughs> The main thing for you guys is that this is a bit earlier than the American uh, equivalent. Um, ah, yeah, from, exactly. your, <laughs> from your perspective, though, Lee, <coughs> the, the fans, the fans <coughs> have listened to this today, and in, in not far as about a four points reduction. Yeah. And Everton had Everton had ten points. It it then got reduced on appeal to six. What yeah. what what's your views on that? Should I mean a lot of people are saying Newcastle should just say, Well, you know what, let's just do it. Yeah, let's just play. I've said to you a couple of times, Steve, why don't we go and play FIFA football and go and buy 11 world class players at a cost of 100 billion pounds and then take the six points? Or even if they drop as a league, who gives a shit? You know, if that's the way the corruption works, why don't we just go and do it and, and kind of exercise and flex our muscles? It's but do you know what I mean? If we did it, we would get put down to the conference, and I think. I think that's what they're kind of waiting for in a weird kind of way. They're, they're kind of rubbing their hands, waiting yeah, for, yeah. Wait for us to go ahead and follow yeah. and make an example. Yeah. Uh, we, we, uh, you don't want to give them the satisfaction, that though, do you? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's mm -hmm. bizarre, mate. In it, the Chelsea thing, it started with the Chelsea thing when they were funded, yeah, yeah. By, funded by absolute corruption, weren't they? And yeah. I think what's going to step into Ukraine at the moment, and I reckon he's got something to do with his mate Roman. Um, but yeah, no, it's wrong, mate, because they are going after the clubs, the genuine clubs. Not that I'm bothered about Everton, by the way, because I absolutely howl it. But for football and the integrity of the game, there needs to be it needs to be looked into. And I can't understand why the rest of the Premier League haven't got together and aired the dirty laundry in public and said, right, we're going to challenge this and let's see if democracy still does rule. But I don't know. Why are they not doing it? Is there something going on behind the scenes and they're getting in touch? We don't know. I think it's clicks me. I think the chairman's clicks. Yeah, I, think yeah, exactly. I think there's some ring. I think there's tears to a ring and they're all getting a little bit, they're all getting fed a little bit, shall we say, behind closed doors. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, have you, have you checked my WhatsApp? I haven't, but you know what? Because for some reason, my phone is. It's literally gone absolutely mental and night, and then it's it's, <laughs> closed, it's closed down. But you know what? I I have been on a rare, and, it, it, and <laughs> people, people who follow a new FC Madison's lockdown know that I don't go out a great deal. No, but you deserve to go out a bit more. I did go out today with Stu Penman and Steve Hasty, and we went out today and we've put the world to rights. But you know what? My main Ian 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 My main focus is always to be back here at six o'clock to provide some entertainment for every single person who watches any UFC matters. And 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 the main thing about Pablo is that Pablo did a lot of shows with me when I was drunk. And I used to do I used to do a show called News of the World, which I probably will bring back Lee. I think we should bring it back because that was me unhinged. That was me just saying, you know what? I do, it, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if I've, if I've had a drink. Let's just talk about the news. And when I talk about the news, by by the way, I've got an opinion. Um, but, but tonight was one of those little things where I've come back. I've had a, I've had a couple of... I, I think we've had... Me, Stu Perman and Steve Hasty have had five bottles of wine today. And you know what? I've done well to hold it together. But you know what? Thank you to everybody in the chat. All those moderators who hold things together. But thanks to everybody who... I, I, you know what? <laughs> the, people, the people on the screen tonight will be going, 
You know what, Steve? Not as usual. Next week will come and see you. And there's one or two people. There's one or two people on there, Ian in particular, who could probably. Oh, to be honest, Peter. I thought I was going to be the most. Moral. You can rip me a I'm bit, Ian. But, but you didn't. And this has been brilliant because Spenny's mortal. You're absolutely pissed out of your tree. And I don't know what fucking Pablo has been up to, but he's on one as well. <laughs> yeah. I'm and guess so what, Steve? I used to work for Alcoholics Anonymous as well. I feel like. Can I just I, say, I, can I just say, like, and Alan, I've never had a drop in my life. Good I'm not an alcoholic, but, but Ian Brown says, can we have a sing song? So I'm going to start it off. And then on an on a Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Take care.